It's time for the North Idaho PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. That's right. Welcome in another edition of the North Idaho PrepCast on IdahoSports.com, where we are breaking down District 1 and 2 athletics and activities week in, week out in the great state of Idaho. Welcome in. Uh, the North Idaho PrepCast is presented by No Vape Idaho. Idaho Public Television's campaign to promote and raise the awareness of the dangers of youth vaping. Be smart. Don't start. My name is Brandon Bainey. Let's bring in our North Idaho resident and expert, Ryan Skaggs. Skaggs, what's going on? Just another day in paradise, Bainey. <laughs> yes. Not too much. Just uh, enjoying... Uh... Well, spring break. I don't. I don't get spring break. I still have to work and have a life. But I know the kids are out there enjoying it. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's weird because uh, part of my job. Everybody always asks, like, "Oh man, how great is it?" You know, working at IdahoSports.com full time. I said, "Yeah, it's awesome." Um, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, you just do podcasts and broadcasts," and I'm like, "That is like that's like two percent of the job. Like 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 ninety eight percent of what I'm doing is like." stuff on the back end on the website, like putting in schedules and putting in rosters and editing content. And uh, so I, one of the things I have to do is get all the rosters right for baseball and softball and get those put into our website. That's something that we've uh, been featuring the last uh, year or so on IdahoSports.com rosters for every sport. You can find that on each team's individual page. Just scroll down to the bottom. Um, but I, I got some of the bounce back emails right from some of the schools up north. Like, hey, I'm out of the office. It's spring break. See ya. But then other schools uh, responded to me. So I guess not everybody. Not on everybody's spring on spring break. But there's a large portion of North Idaho. I think District 1 by and large is on spring break. But uh, yeah, no, it's there's still stuff going on, though. I mean, I still I went down to the LC Valley last weekend and I still saw school buses going north to south and south to north so there's still things going on <laughs> yes we had a lot of our baseball and softball teams head down to the boise area for spring break th their spring break uh spring break baseball and softball tournaments we'll get to those in a little bit but you mentioned it ryan right off the jump uh you were in the lc valley last week uh lewis did hosted uh one of the bigger track meets of the season so far and there was a lot of good results from, from yeah. North Idaho athletes. No, there was some really impressive results. And I mean, if you go look at the state marks right now, you know, by and large district one and two, very well represented as far as uh, the top marks in the state of Idaho. I mean, for any classification, you look at uh, Kobe Cameron from post falls has a leading time in the 400 um, at 50.57, which is more than impressive. And then his four by four team, they're first in the state, 327.86. Um, you know, him and Trenton McLean, Taysen Genitone, and Talon McCracken uh, from Post Falls. They have the leading time. The 4 by 8 team from Sandpoint's got the leading marks. Um, the real cool one from this past weekend um, that I saw from the result from that meet down in Lewiston, that was Benny Elvin from Prairie winning the discus with a toss of 139 and 10 inches. That was pretty awesome for the small school uh prairie kid to to win the the disc and get the gold there that was pretty impressive and then sage on the girl side wins with a toss of 130 and two inches so uh the two prairie kids well represented and prairie boys wins the four by 100 meter uh relay that was super impressive for four, uh, 45 seconds and 45.68 i should say was the winning time in the four by one so um awesome job the small school is very well represented in that meet down in lewiston yeah, I mean, you look at the team scores on the boys' side. You know, Post Falls won the team title at 170. Uh, McCall Donnelly took second. Timberlake was third. But there's Prairie finishing in fourth place with 69 points ahead of schools like Sandpoint, Lewiston, Clarkston, schools yep. that are, you know, two or three times their size. So way to go, yep. Prairie, taking fourth in the team race on the boys' side. Here's, here's another cool one is they had Javelin. Uh, at the meet on Saturday, which is, you know, not necessarily a, a common event in the state of Idaho, uh, mm -hmm. since you had some Washington schools there. They often, they open up with Javelin. Kaylee Wood from Deary walks out and throws 108, 11 and a half and wins it <laughs> in the girls' Javelin. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the small school is just absolutely, I think, shined in that event on Saturday uh, down in Lewiston. 
Yeah, uh, Javelin is coming to the state of Idaho. Oh, man, somebody help me out here. I believe it's next year. Uh, I think you're correct. I'm, I can't, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure you're correct there. The IHSAA uh, board approved adding Javelin, but I think that starts taking place next year. But, hey, if, I, if I'm a coach and I'm going to a meet where there's Javelin, why not let some of my athletes get a chance to, to learn how to throw it and get some reps in, kind of like the shot clock thing, right? Yeah. In basketball, you had a year to kind of implement it, and then, okay, here it is at state, ready to go. Uh, and I love it because, you know, I grew up in Montana, Brian. You grew up in Washington. Um, I don't. Did you do track in field? Yeah. yeah, I was a track athlete. Okay, and I, I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't an athlete, but I, I did track and field. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I and and I was a thrower, and I loved the javelin. It was my favorite event, and so that was a big thing when I moved here. I was like, boy, Idaho doesn't have a javelin. Like you're missing out. Yeah, for no, sure. That was the thing about you know we had javelin, but we didn't have the four by two. So that was the trade-off for the Washington didn't have the four by two, but you do have the javelin. So it's like, okay, well, I didn't pick up any field events and I just did three sprint events. So that's where I was at. And I was too short to run the 400. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Montana, Montana doesn't have as many relays. It's just four by four, four by one. That's yep. it. Yeah. That's keep it simple. Right. Anyways. Yep. They, yeah. Don't, don't overcomplicate things. We didn't even have the medley or anything like that. We'd run it when you go to Idaho, but. You don't see it very often. And and because there's only two relays, um, there's been a couple of times in history where um, at the smallest level in Montana, um, a team will roll up and win the state cha- class C is the smallest classification of Montana. A class C will roll up and win the championship behind like two athletes that just yeah. like dominated all of their events. One time, uh, Hot Springs, which is in Western Montana, they won with one guy. One guy single-handedly won all four of his events, um, and they won the state title. He went on to throw javelin at Fresno State, and then he competed in the Olympics as well. Uh, Todd Reich was his name. But anyways, uh, I, I mean, you just don't see that in Idaho because there's so many relays and everything gets yeah. diversified so much. But That was the one thing, yeah, you notice about Idaho and other states is like track meets in Idaho last a little bit longer. You got more events to go through and more prelims and all that stuff too. But uh, no, I mean, this weekend, that that event down in Lewiston was more than impressive. And um, being able to see the the small school kids show up and then Post Falls shows up, Kobe Cameron, he won the 200, 400, 4x2 four and 4x4. Four four. I mean, that you talk about having a heck of a showing uh, four golds, all four events for, for the individual, obviously at two relays, but, uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. Yeah. That, uh, 200 time or the 400 time by Kobe Cameron, 50, 57 is the top mark in the state so far this year. Um, and Ivy Smith from Sandpoint on the girl's side, Yep, she throws at 43 feet, 10 inches in the shot put. That is the top mark in the state right now. Uh, a little bit later on today, Ryan, our first uh, installment of our weekly track and field notebook. We talked about this last week. Marlo Herford, who is the, the preeminent track and field and cross country um, writer in the entire state, is going to be doing a weekly notebook for us. Uh, she's calling it the Bell Lap. I love that. That's a great. I, that was totally all her. That's good marketing right there. That was all Herford. <laughs> that's right. Uh, oh, that's good. That's good. So the first the first edition of the Bell Lap uh, will be posted later today on IdahoSports.com. Uh, I'll just give you a little sneak peek. A lot of North Idaho stuff in there, especially um, on the thrower side, talking about Ivy Smith from Sandpoint and Asia Abubakari from Bonner's Ferry. They've gone head to head a couple of times this year, including at the Lewiston Invite last week. Yep. So. Uh, congrats to both of them. Um, Sage Elvin still has the top throw in the state for girls discus from Prairie. I got to assume her and Benny are are related, but I learned a couple of years ago with uh, some of the shears down there at, at Prairie that they actually weren't related. So you never want to assume, but that's all awesome too. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you could assume that there's a connection there and somebody will probably chime in later on in the comments and say, yeah, they're, they're brother and sister or cousins or whatever, but yeah. Uh, but regardless, they're they're doing a well a good job representing the last name, <laughs> related or not. So, yeah, no, uh, just just a lot of good stuff going on, and we got some big events. I know there's a big track meet coming up after spring break up here in Cooney County, so there's going to be a big event coming up 
Uh, I believe that's on the Tuesday after spring break. So no days off. I mean, you go right back to work coming out of the break. Yeah, for sure. Uh, here's uh, our, our your boss and mine in, in the chat, Paul Kingsbury. Brandon's being mo modest. It wasn't Todd Reich. It was him. Uh, I wish I could say I single-handedly won a state track championship, but uh, <laughs> alas. Uh, honestly, uh, our throwers were not good. Uh, one year, we lost the divisional championship by like half a point, and we had this like really outstanding hurdler uh, and long distance runner. He ended up, you know, winning both hurdles races at state and was a finalist for the, uh, the national high school Heisman award ESPN came to our school and like filmed a little package. And then he got to go to New York the year, like Vince young and those guys were there. Um, he was like one of like five finalists in the country. Anyways, he, he uh, he saved a secret service agent's life in the, uh, the Arlington mall you know, over in Washington, DC distinguished military career, just outstanding human being but anyways uh <laughs> we, we lost the, the divisional championship in track uh by half a point and all of us throwers are kind of we are, we were done for the day and we're kind of eating our sandwiches and you know eating food of course and uh he comes <laughs> over to us and he goes one point one gd point is all i needed from you guys and you couldn't deliver <laughs> <laughs> couldn't you at least offer him something to eat <laughs> we kind of we kind of just shrugged and like eh, sorry <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so that it gives you an idea of my track and field prowess yeah mine, mine ended my one time running the 400 i broke a minute i was stoked and then went and puked <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> my coach is like i bet you can't break, break a minute and i ran like 56 and i ran right through the finish line to the end of the track and just everything emptied out <laughs> oh my gosh that's funny wow uh here's our east idaho prep caster east idaho prep cast will be tomorrow evening sean kane uh 0.5 haunts my dreams yeah in tennis right you can lose yep. by half a point oh or yeah, uh, two or three years ago, the 4A championship came down to like fractions of points and what river ended up winning it of all teams. But yeah. Uh, yeah, East Idaho Prepcast tomorrow night because Sean Kane is taking the Century Tennis team up to Rigby to compete uh, today. So uh, tennis, of course, off and running up here in North Idaho as well, Ryan, uh, when the weather is nice, which yeah. it was last week. It was. And then we got rain and lots of it over the last few days but yeah it was it was nice we got we were lucky and I, I think all teams didn't we don't think we know if we had a single rain out between uh monday through thursday evening last weekend so it was a pretty pretty uh smooth sailing and nice weather for the kids to get out there on the courts i know lake city was out there i drove by on wednesday and they were practicing and i was like man this is like this is why i coached tennis was like when i was a tennis coach in the spring was those type of days, it was like 65 and sunny. And I was just like, man, this is t-shirt weather. Um, you know, you get a chance to get a suntan, <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's off and running. There's some, some good, good tennis being played. And I know that up the road in Sandpoint, I'll get a hold of, of coach Anderson up there, but um, they've got a special group. We talked about them last week on the prep cast and there's, there's some good things going on with, with, uh, with tennis here in, in North Idaho. Yeah, I feel like Moscow, Lewiston are always really solid. Coeur d'Alene always seems to kind of yep. hold their own. Um, Coeur d'Alene Charter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In the three ranks, Coeur d'Alene Charter holds their own as well. So there's some some good play to be had around here. Yeah, so last week, uh, Ryan, in tennis, you had Lake City and Coeur d'Alene Charter face each other, which we don't get a lot of, right? A 5A yeah. versus a 3A. Uh, Lake City won, but it was close, 7-5. to five. So. Yeah. That shows you what kind of talent Coeur d'Alene Charter's got for sure, right? No, they've got a good little program there, and they've been they've been strong for a number of years. So, um, you know, it's it's in, it'll be interesting to see how things shake up in the postseason. I know that you know you always run into some, you know, you don't get the bids that you do down south and in, in District Three and maybe five and six, but um, you know, there's still good players to be to be you know around in this area, it's maybe not the, the depth, but you certainly have the, the cream rises to the top and no exception with Coeur d'Alene Charter, Sandpoint, Coeur d'Alene, Lake City have historically had good players as well. Lakeland was good for a few years. They've, they're kind of in a rebuilding year this year. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. 
Yeah, Lakeland was a powerhouse under the tutelage of Coach Skaggs. And then no, we were not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were we were a fledgling program. I took over. I think the program had only been in existence for one year. So um you got got some some growing pains out of the way, but um yeah, no, it's a you know, they when I left though, they they took off. They had a good group. I left them with a good core. I can't take any credit. The kids put in all the work, but um, the program really started to grow and they went through a nice boom there, but this year they're rebuilding. They're really young, but I know they'll be, they'll be back around. They'll get some, some good, strong players coming back through the system sooner than later. Yep, for sure. So tennis off and running, uh, golf. We finally had golf skags, uh, we did. A, a, a tournament in Lewiston. When in um, doubt, go to Lewiston. That's a spring rule, right? <laughs> the, the event featured Kellogg. Bonner's Ferry, Lakeside, St. Mary's, and Lapway. So I guess what Lapway was the host, right? Probably. Uh, sure. Or just they, they I think they just called it the Lewiston Invitational, but <laughs> it was at Bryden Canyon Golf Course in Lewiston. And uh, the courses down there actually look like they're in pretty good shape. I mean, I drove by a few of them this weekend and um, you know, it was rainy and drizzly, but like they were they were in pretty good condition and the, the greens look like they're pretty good shape. They've been having a good amount of fair amount of sun for the last couple of weeks. So um but yeah, no, Braylon Bayer shot a 77 from Bonner's Ferry to win the girls' side on the as the medalist. That was an impressive showing by her. Um and then obviously Seth Swallows from St. Mary's was the medalist on the boys' side. So that was uh pretty uh he shot a 76. So uh, a couple of good rounds, low rounds by both the medalists. She is so good, uh, yeah. Braylon Bayer, and and of course, um, her twin sister Avery Bayer, also no slouch on the golf course, and they've actually signed for competing Division One golf programs. Ryan, <laughs> I don't know if you heard about this, but I didn't they, know. they both signed in the Big Sky Conference. Avery signed with Idaho State University in Pocatello. And Braylon signed with Weber State, which is the closest geographic rival to Idaho State yeah. in the Big Sky. So how about that? The twin sisters splitting up and taking their own paths in college, but both golfing at the D1 level next year. That's impressive. And they've they've earned it, man. They are great players and they've had great success through their high school careers and done a phenomenal job with that Bonners Ferry team. Braylon is the reigning 3A individual champ in girls golf as well. After taking second her sophomore year, Avery was third last year. So, I mean, these two have been, I feel like it's one of those, uh, you've been here for 20 years because they both yeah. came in as freshmen and placed high on the leaderboard. And now in their final season, it's going to be really fun to watch them compete. But congratulations to Braylon Bayer, the medalist on the girls side and Seth Swallows from St. Mary's was the boys medalist. A lot of those basketball names I'm recognizing here, yeah. like uh, Seth Swallows from St. Mary's. And you look at like Lakeside and it's Brutus Side John and Liam Hendricks. And uh, you look at Kellogg, Brody Robinson. And so it's cool. I like it. Yeah. And the Kellogg boys ended up winning the, the team affair. And, and, you know, that was Bonner's Fair Girls won on the girls side. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it's good all around showing. And I mean, you're playing golf in spring, so that's kind of a good sign that things are turning around. The, the grass is getting greener. The sun's getting a little brighter. Uh, we, we've kind of broke out of the doldrums of winter, although it snowed in Coeur d'Alene yesterday morning again. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those things where you got to kind of take your lumps and then you'll trade it for, um, you know, some good golf this spring. There's going to be a lot more tournaments ahead in, in North Idaho, and they get to play kind of like a really nice tour of – of golf courses throughout district one and district two, they get to play some really nice places. So uh, there's a little bit of jealousy on this side too. <laughs> yeah. And as, as a reminder, uh, spring golf is only for three, a two, a one, a schools, five, a yep. and four, a compete now in the fall. Uh, Sean Kane is peppering in all sorts of good tennis comments here. He's our go-to guy for tennis info from North Idaho. Um, last year, Combs from Coeur d'Alene Charter lost to Jordan Hicks from Declo in the 3A girls singles final. So she'll be one to keep an eye on as well. And then he also says, look out in freshman girls singles for a girl named Pepper. So, yes, yeah, I think that's the gal from, uh, from Sandpoint. She's, she's going to be a good one. So I know that yeah. they're really high on her. Yep. And then Sean added this. 
He has not had a tan in years. Because <laughs> you live in eastern Idaho and all you get is the wind. Congratulations. I did text him good luck today as he's going up to Rigby to compete against Sean Kane, our East Idaho prep caster. He's the Century High School uh, tennis coach. Uh, and he said, yeah, today I'm two-coat Kane. It's two-coat two coat yeah. kind of weather. So <laughs> That's where we would get the, the tournaments that we'd go to late in the season in Spokane and it'd be 85 and you'd just come home with blistering sunburns and everything else and yeah, a little, the tale of two different types of uh, tennis being played as far as environments go. <laughs> Definitely. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the weather is so unpredictable in the spring in East Idaho and North Idaho, certainly. Yep. So everybody says, yeah, go to the Treasure Valley when you can, man. The weather's great. It's we'll 60 go to and, and, and sunny. And the tennis got blown out this weekend down in Lewiston, too. So, I mean, it was nobody was immune to, to poor weather. Yeah. And so everybody always says, ah, go to the Treasure Valley, man, the banana belt. Yeah, the weather's great. So the biggest spring break softball and baseball tournaments of the year were held in the Boise area last weekend, Skaggs. But guess what? We got to Saturday and, and the rain started falling and a lot of those softball and baseball games ended up getting wiped out on the baseball side though we did see some impressive performances lake city Coeur d'Alene, and lewiston all went to the 5a spring break tournament co-hosted by rocky mountain and mountain view 5a teams only please and thank you uh post falls <laughs> meanwhile went to the annual bucks bags <laughs> tournament as well i know it's i just i we, we're just poking fun it's cool that the 5a schools want to go do their own thing um, they kind of broke away from Bucks bags and they're trying, trying their own thing. And so, I you know, know. Good. yeah, I was, I was saying that jokingly because yes. the way we made it sound, but yeah. yes. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but so Coeur d'Alene and Lake city both went down and played pretty well. Lake yeah. city and everybody was supposed to get four games. Coeur d'Alene only got two in. They beat Highland lost to Rocky mountain. Lake city got a third game in because, uh, they looked at Highland and said, I know we already played you guys, but you want to just get an extra game in on Saturday if the weather holds. And Highland said, sure. So Lakeland split with Highland and they beat Rocky Mountain. So I'd say yeah. Lake City had the more successful weekend overall. Yeah, an impressive showing to Cooper Reese uh, in that that nightcap game when they beat Highland uh, through nine Ks uh, from the mound. And then Avery Cherry to the two run bomb. Uh, for the T-Wolves in the 6-1 win I was w over Highland. They did lose 3-0 to Highland in the previous game, but uh, to come back and take it 6-1, that's a nice little rebound there uh, for the Timberwolves. But they got a big win um, over Rocky, too, so that was an impressive. I think they had the most impressive weekend um, you know, of the 5A teams up north. Yeah, it was really fun to see them uh, compete and, and play. And then you also had a local baseball tournament up north here, Skaggs, over the weekend, the uh, annual South Fork Slugfest hosted by Clearwater Valley over in Kooski. And they kind of looked at the weather forecast and said, Saturday is going to be kind of gnarly. Instead of having the tournament Friday and Saturday, let's move it up a day and let's go Thursday and Friday instead. And rousing success they got all the games in a team from washington actually ended up winning the tournament um liberty christian uh they went four and oh uh and they're from where the tri-cities yeah they're a tri-cities team okay uh and then we had uh band in oregon take second place uh they ended up tied with north star charter and clearwater valley they all went two and two uh, but Bandon got the head-to-head -head tiebreaker criteria. So uh, the two out-of-state teams take the top two spots, Skaggs. we got to defend home turf a little better next time. Yeah, we got to defend home turf a little bit better. But, I mean, still a great showing. And hats off to Clearwater Valley. Uh, you told me um, and kind of showed me what their broadcast stuff was like. I know that you probably wanted to mention that. But um, they did a great job running that event. And I, I know that that's going to be an event that's going to grow. It's a it's a cool setting for baseball. and. Uh, the Clearwater Valley, Kamii, Orfino, through that region, man, they just absolutely show up and show out when it comes to baseball. Yeah, and uh, Josh Bradley, the base, the head baseball coach at Clearwater Valley, is awesome. He's an awesome guy, and he gets it. He knows that, hey, coaching the guys and, and coaching them in between the lines is important, but also as a head coach, you know, I've got to promote 
my program and promote what we're doing a little bit. And so they have a great YouTube channel where they broadcast all of their games, multiple camera angles, center. It's like you're watching a, a, a big league game. It's, it's really yeah. cool. Uh, they, they cut up highlights from every game of the tournament. They did interviews with all of the players of the game um, from every single game of the tournament. Um, they put together a little 15 minute, montage and you can watch that on youtube just type in cv ram baseball on youtube that's cv ram baseball and so coach bradley is doing a great job of promoting his program making sure their games are, are being broadcast and some coaches are they guard that so tightly right yeah we can't get any information about our team out it's it's nice to see a coach lean the other way and go hey i want everybody to know about what's going on yeah. with our baseball team well, they did a phenomenal job, and I mean, that's just getting the kids. You know, there's, there's, the tide is turning. I think, in, in that regard, and you know, we could talk about some of the smaller schools. They, I think they've done a better job than a lot of the bigger schools have, as far as getting the notoriety out of their players and what's going on within the program. I mean, we can look at like Lapway basketball. Uh, you know, Kendrick does a great job on the football side of things. That like, there's, there's programs out there that do such a good job. Uh, Lewiston does a great job with the 5A stuff for for all sports too. I mean, their their students, um, the access that they get, they do a phenomenal job as well. So it's it's turning a little bit. I don't think everybody's so ho hum grumbling about it anymore. But um, now it's finding the kids or the people willing to do it, and that's that's been the the problem for a while. And now you're getting these kids that you said changing generations. I mean, you can kind of see it, and it's going more digital, and so you're getting this stuff built in and. Uh, to see the small schools do it and do it well is is awesome. Yeah, I think it's great. So keep up the work, uh, the good work, uh, Clearwater Valley baseball program, and congrats on going two and two at the tournament. This another well. another baseball stat that I found that was impressive. I don't know if you're going to mention this one, but Lakeland sweeping Bonner's Ferry uh, this weekend in baseball. Uh, Lakeland won eleven five and fifteen five. They had thirty two hits in two games. <laughs> That was something to me just stood out. That was an awesome job by, you know, new first year coach Al Bivakwa, who I know Al Bivak's an awesome dude. He's such an awesome guy. And uh, for him to take over his alma mater and doing a great job and, um, you know, in his first year, that's a, that's an awesome thing to see Lakeland taking off and having some success right off the bat. All right. And so can you tell me, uh, Colleen was the longtime softball coach at Lakeland. She isn't yeah, anymore. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Colleen cool. was there. Al has been a longtime football assistant coach, um, but he's been – I mean, they've lived in in Raftram the fa as a family. They've been there forever. Um, but Al's a big-time baseball guy, and he played at the collegiate level and came back, and he took over for Coach Bradbury, who did a great job with the Lakeland program. But Jason wants more time with family, so that's, that's cool and great for him. And, you know, Al stepped in, and uh, they're off and running. This Lakeland team, they've got some players. They've got arms. But man, they're bats. Like talk about 32 hits in two games. That's an absolutely impressive showing against a good group of athletes. So yeah, I mean that Bonner's Ferry team's no slouch either. So uh, great job by Lakeland getting the sweep. Yeah, and people are gonna look out of the gates, right, and see Bonner's Ferry, a team that we know is 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 really talented and good. And they're gonna see that record of one and eight, and they're gonna be alarmed. And what I'll tell you. Not to quote Aaron Rodgers here, but R E L A X. You have to remember that they went on a very deep run in boys basketball, right? Got as far as you can get <laughs> yeah. while the other teams in their league were already inside hitting the cages and whatnot. Bonner's Ferry was winning a boys basketball state championship. A lot of their, their boys basketball guys also play baseball, including, you know, most of their pitching staff. Um, as we get into April, and mid-April, I think Bonner's Ferry is finally going to get their footing under them a little bit. And and they've, they've played a challenging schedule out of the gates as well. Yeah. Um, Orofino might be the best small school program in North Idaho this year. I feel pretty good about you know their yeah. chances of getting a state and competing. Um, they've played some really good Washington teams. Grangeville's really good. So And, and then Lakeland. And so... Again, I wouldn't worry too much yet if no. you're Bonner's Ferry. It's a process. So, <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there, and the pieces are still there. I mean, it's just going to be, there's, it's a, it's a season. You got to put together games, but you got guys that are coming off the hardwood that, you know, they're coming off the hardwood, coming off the football field. So you go back, it's like, when's the last time some of these guys have thrown a baseball? 
or when's right. the last time they stood in the box and, and swung the bat. So, you know, it's, it's, you kind of got to, you know, I'm all for kids being multi-sport athletes. It'll come around. It will. And the law of averages will work in their favor. There's, there's athletes. If you're going to be a good athlete, you're a good athlete. So I'm not, I'm not scared for the likes of like, you know, rice and the Batemans and everything else. So I think they're going to be just fine. Definitely. All right. Well, uh, let's wrap up the show then with a little bit of non spring sports news. We got to go back into the basketball arena. We're in the, <laughs> smack dab in the middle of March madness. And just in the last 48 hours here, Ryan, you had Utah state, uh, their season came to an end, uh, in the round of 32 at the NCAA tournament. Um, they fell, uh, uh, to Yukon, right? The, the number one overall seed, um, and then turn around and a day later, Danny Sprinkle, the Utah state head coach who recruited and signed case. Why not from Lapway? Yep. Well, he's now being introduced as the new head basketball coach at Washington. And I think those that are kind of in the know saw this coming. Yeah. Um, he had coach Sprinkle had very recently turned down a pretty fair contract extension at Utah state. And so that kind of raised the antenna and everyone went, oh boy yeah he's 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 out and probably going to washington um and we knew this might happen right this happens all the time when a coach leaves a player that he has recruited then says well i don't know if i really want to go there anymore because the coach is the reason i was going so long story short case why not has reopened his commitment and i'm sure he's got thousands of people texting him and calling him uh, from both the college level and also in the media, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna sit back and hey, I'm looking forward to when you announce. And, yeah. and that's. I'm gonna leave it at that. You know, that was a thing. Like, I, I got a chance to message his dad. And I'm like, hey, you guys. You know, I get to be a fan wherever you go. Like, I'll, I'll cheer for you and, you know, do what's best for you. I understand the situation where you lose your coach. You know, in the day and age of. NIL and portal and everything else. And, and things change so fast in college sports. I don't think that, you know, people think of the old school way of like, you know, you're kind of stuck three, four, five years ago where you're still looking at it to where like, Oh, you commit, you're going to, you're going to give a year, whatever things blink of an eye can change. And the, you know, teams jump on coaches immediately. I mean, I already read this morning that, you know, Alfred, the coach at Nevada is getting interviewed at Oklahoma state. Like there's movement. It happens fast. So, you know, for case to take care of case, there's, there's no judgment at all for, for making that move of the D He could still go back to Utah state too. That's the thing that people don't realize is that, you know, he still likes the school and everything else, but he's going to do what's best for him in the situation. And depending on who they hire, case could go back to be an Aggie who knows, but you know, as of last night, though, he had five offers within the first like 12 hours of opening his his uh, recruitment back up. So, you know, that that's <laughs> you talk about he's in demand. He's a great basketball player, a great kid. You know, we wish him the best. We get to be a fan wherever he goes. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, the, the college coaching carousel is nuts. I mean, I just heard today yeah. that before we hopped on. Uh, Andy Enfield now might leave USC to go to SMU and you're going, well, SMU, you got to remember they're joining the ACC. So that's, he's going to another power league, uh, which would then open up, uh, Eric Musselman going from Arkansas to USC. And then who's going to fill it up? It's just, it's nonstop. And so, non-stop. um, I think, yeah. I think I'm just going to sit back and enjoy, enjoy it. I know there's probably going to be people on Twitter trying to get the scoop. Hey, where's case going to go? And they're going to try and, Oh, here's my crystal ball. And here's what I'm going to predict. Here's what I'm going to predict. Yeah. Whatever choice he makes, it's going to be great. And I can't wait to watch it. How about that? Yeah, and that's, everybody's going to want to be the, the scoop. And as you know, Jeremiah Dickey, who's the athletic director of Boise state says so perfectly, I think is describes it perfectly. He's like the vampires are everywhere. And so you know, they're, they're coming out, they come out of the shadows from everywhere. And it's like, so you got to be about what you're about and be who you are. And that's, I, you know, I look at, you know, Case's dad, Jeremiah and Case and going through their decisions and, you know, getting to hang around them during the all-star weekend and stuff like that too, like pretty tight lipped on what's going on, but um, things change fast, man. They, it goes so quick. And, you know, you look at, you know, he said that flat out, like, Sprinkle wasn't in contact with them after he left to UW. Like they, that was in a Twitter post. So, you know, things can 
return and all, they can change. You never know, but you just got to support. The end of the day is don't get mad about where a kid's going. Support the kid. Like they're going to do what's best for them and their education and their opportunities moving ahead. And so as adults, like instead of ribbing a kid for flipping a commitment, like support the kid in his decision and, and what they're going to do next. And, you know, he's done everything right. Why would he change now? So I, I don't know. Somebody was ripping case uh, for, for decommitting and calling loyalty into check. And I'm like, he hasn't even set foot on Utah state's <laughs> campus yet. And there is no loyalty because he hasn't even been enrolled there yet. So what are you talking about? Um, but like I said, the vampires are everywhere, you know? So, but at the end of the day, case is a great kid. We're going to wish him the best. We get a front row seat to being fans. And I think that's a pretty good spot to be. And so take the positivity route and just support the, the kids wherever they go. If you're somebody on Twitter and you're calling out an 18 year old kid, I mean, you're a miserable get, human being. I'm sorry, but like, get, yeah, wow, <laughs> get a reality <laughs> check, right? I mean, come Seriously, on, that's, come on, yeah, that's nuts. Uh, right. Leave it, leave him alone. Seriously, let him yeah. let him go through the process on his terms. Selfishly, uh, where, where would I want to see Case go? I have I have a favorite, but who knows? <laughs> we'll so. see. And I suspect it's a lot of a, a lot of your ilk that are part of the problem and i'll sure. leave it at, i'll leave it at that yeah, his rivals have been an issue but yeah no it's, yeah i mean either, i don't care if he goes, i mean i hate the huskies and if he goes to UW and follows sprinkle there i'll cheer for case <laughs> so yeah and if you don't know what we're talking about just look at the jersey on the back of skags's wall that's what we're referring to <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh I'll, I'll say one last thing here uh well here here's a comment from paul paul kingsbury uh, I think we can't blame all these college players for leaving teams, hitting the transfer portal, et cetera. If coaches do the same thing. Absolutely. hundred percent agree. hundred percent yeah. agree. Absolutely. I will say one last dig here at Danny Sprinkle. Uh, his behavior is not surprising to me considering he's not only a former coach at Montana state, but a former player at Montana state. And that's just how, that's just how they I'm develop. Career, career. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm just I'm just <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, yeah, kick them all they're down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, of course. Um, but how uh, funny would it be if Utah State hires Logie? That would be that would be pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. Uh, nah, I don't. He's I don't a good know. coach. He was great at Whitworth. He did a phenomenal job at Whitworth up the road in Spokane. But yeah. So yeah. anyways, that could be a whole other podcast. <laughs> we we could sit here and talk college coaching for hours that carousel <laughs> goes around and it's a big carousel <laughs> yeah so sicko's up. committee i think sicko's committee did a on twitter did a like carousel for college football on how many schools were connected to the one hiring of kaylin DeBoer. it was like there was it was like 44 schools were involved with somebody from a staff moving because of that one hire yeah, a true, a true, true domino effect, right? Yep. Yeah. So that just, I digress, but we can end the podcast. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's get, let's get out of here on that note. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody, to the North Idaho Prepcast. You can check this out every single week uh, on the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel, Facebook page, or Twitter account. Uh, you can also listen to this podcast at IdahoSports.com or wherever you download and subscribe two podcasts and if you uh subscribe uh then you don't have to download it every single week whenever we publish a new episode it just automatically gets downloaded same thing on youtube if you just subscribe to our channel you'll get a notification when we're going live to do the north idaho prepcast you don't have to search us out we'll find you so i would definitely subscribe uh to our youtube channel or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app as well so we Absolutely. will find you. <laughs> that didn't yeah. sound ominous, right? <laughs> you can also, when you subscribe to stuff, you also get live events like next weekend when we're doing the North Idaho Hall of Fame banquet here on IdahoSports.com. Yes, uh, we will be talking in detail more about that next week. Uh, but we are, are proud to partner with the North Idaho Hall of Fame uh, to broadcast their ceremony this year. It's going to be Saturday, April 6th and details on the way. So yep. stay tuned for that as well. All right. For Ryan Skaggs, I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for tuning in to the North Idaho Prepcast, everybody. Presented by No Vape Idaho. We'll see you next time on Idaho Sports.